Well, everyone, it's time for us to go ahead and talk about the 16-inch M1 MacBook Pro, M1 Pro, or M1 Max MacBook Pro, and see how it's been holding up in the year of 2022. Now, if you want to buy one of these things, the links are down in the description. Get them from there. Help support the channel at the same time. And I have a complicated history with this MacBook. I originally bought it when it first came out, and I enjoyed it. You know, I think it was awesome, but it was just way too big for me. Then a few months passed. I returned it at that point. A few months passed, and I ended up actually buying it again. I figured, you know what? This is the best MacBook you can buy. I doubt Apple's going to change anything in the next four to five years. That's crazy. And this thing has an SD card slot. So I came from a 15 inch 2015 MacBook Pro and, you know, I had the M1 MacBook Pro for about a year at that point. And I ended up buying another 16 inch M1 MacBook Pro. And I actually ended up returning that one too. I thought I was going to keep it. I tried my best. I had, uh, you know, kept it for a week and I just, I didn't even film any footage of it. I wish I did, but I ended up returning that too. It was just way too big for me. And guess what? As of right now, I actually ended up buying another 16 inch M1 MacBook Pro as well. So I guess we'll see what happens if I keep it or not. I mean, I'm definitely going to be keeping it, but if, whether it's going to be my main machine or whether I'm going to stick with my 14-inch M1 MacBook Pro. Now, starting off with the outside, again, this is a very thick MacBook and it's a very big MacBook, but this is a double-sided sword. Yes, it's big. And yes, if you're traveling or carrying it with you, maybe a little bit, you know, kind of, you know, weird, but for the amount of power and for the amount of capability within this machine, it is very important to remember what type of MacBook you're going to be getting because this type of device has so much capability inside of it that yeah, it's a little bit bigger, but you want a bigger MacBook because it comes with so much better, you know, just performance and so many other things across the board as well. Now the display on this thing, before we even get there, man, the ports of this thing is insane. On one side, we have two USB type C ports, which is just amazing. And they're Thunderbolt 4, so you can connect to Thunderbolt 4 monitors or whatever else you want. You have that MagSafe 3 port, which that was kind of interesting. Personally, I'm not really super fond of MagSafe ports, although I do charge my, you know, 16 inch MacBook Pro with that MagSafe port. I personally like Thunderbolt ports and I like having a Thunderbolt monitor so I can go and connect to it and charge it at the same time I'm using it. But it's still cool that they ended up bringing it back. The headphone jack, I think I already mentioned that. On the other side though, this is where, this is probably my best side. Now the HDMI my port a lot of people, I don't know if they like it or not, to be honest. Personally, I very rarely ever use an HDMI port on any of my laptops. They're almost all Thunderbolt 4. But having another Thunderbolt 4 port on the other side of the MacBook is really cool. And that's what you're getting here. That way you can charge on each side. You can have one thing plugged on one side and another thing plugged on the other side. For my previous MacBook, I didn't have that. It was only dual USB Type-C ports on one side. And that was kind of annoying. These ones bring it up a notch, which is really cool. But my favorite thing, and the only reason I was even considering upgrading for my previous MacBook was that SD card slot. Having that SD card slot embedded within the MacBook saves me from carrying through and having to carry around an extra dongle with me wherever I went. And that was something that just honestly kind of surprised me. I genuinely did not like bringing that type of dongle with me and I would forget to bring it. I would, it would get lost, it would break, and then it would not work anymore. Like there were so many issues with carrying a dongle with you. And now we do not have that type of issue anymore. And like I mentioned, that is something that's really cool. And by having a big MacBook like this with all the power inside of it, you can pretty much rest assured that you're probably not going to be running into those types of issues in this type of situation. So personally, that is by far one of my favorite things about owning a MacBook like this. Now, opening this MacBook up, we do have that beautiful 16 inch display. And I think it's a little bit bigger than 16 inches, but it's a really, really good panel. Apple did a tremendous job with this type of display. It's a you no know, notch design, so it does have a notch. But honestly, it's not that big of a deal. I don't really think it's been bothering me at all. A lot of the time I do use my devices docked up and with the lid closed. So I'm not even looking at the monitor, which is sad because the monitor and the screen of this thing is so, it's probably one of the best laptop screens of all time. You pretty much have a pro motion display, 120 hertz display on this thing. So I love how Apple went ahead, brought in that notch, which I honestly don't care about too much. They gave us a bigger display, gave us a nice display, and they gave us a pro motion display on this thing too. That in and of itself is really awesome, and that holds up extremely well in this you know type of year. And even looking at the next 10 years of MacBooks, this type of MacBook, in my opinion, is still going to hold up well just because of that display. 
So when it comes down to it, that gets a thumbs up for me for sure as well. The keyboard on this thing too is very good. You know, it's a full size, big, massive keyboard with touch ID in the sensor. You have the two speaker grills on the sides and this huge trackpad. You know, I think it's a little bit too big to be honest, but you know, I think it's totally okay as well. So in terms of the outside, I think this MacBook is a very solid MacBook for sure. Now it does start at $2,499 and that's only for the base model. You can spec it up to however high you want to go to it and you because of this macbook you have that type of capability of specking it out exactly how you want it which i think is kind of an advantage so let's say you didn't want to have the most amount of ram or you didn't want a certain chipset well you can go ahead and spec it out it's going to be more expensive but that is something else that you have the capability of doing because these macbooks have the either the m1 pro chipset or the m1 max chipset your performance is definitely going to vary now personally i do have the m1 pro chipset in my macbook for both my macbooks i have the m1 pros i've heard amazing things about the m1 max models as well now with the m1 pro the base model you can get 10 core cpu with eight performance cores and two efficiency cores and 16 core gpus with the m1 max you can get 10 core cpu but you're getting 32 cores of your gpu now i remember when macbooks almost only had like quad core cpus and like whatever like a dual core gpu or something like that these ones are in a whole nother level so i will say from my performance from everything i've done from editing videos and photoshopping and all this other stuff mac my m1 macbook pro my m1 macbook air could easily do everything i want to do with it i'm not really you know utilizing everything from my macbook as i probably think i do so I say that to say, if you're somebody who thinks they need the most capable machine of all time, you need all that power, definitely the 16-inch MacBook Pro is going to be able to handle everything you throw at it, but you may not need all this power. You probably only need a power of an M1 MacBook Air, but maybe you think you need all that power. In my opinion, I don't need it at all, but I like having the port selection. So the power of this thing, I mean, you can run on the benchmarks and everything, but for me personally, I don't play any video games on any of my devices for the most part. And maybe the only things I run are like emulators sometimes, but with a MacBook like this, you are going to be set for as high of a threshold as you want and as low of a threshold as you want. So if you just want something where you're just, you know, taking notes and you just want something that lasts long and has good battery life, this is a salt. This is probably the best machine ever. But also if you want to go ahead and go up a notch and you want to do the most demanding stuff of all time, this is also going to be something that's going to take you there too. Like if this MacBook cannot do it, a lot of devices that are, you know, in your scope probably won't be able to do it as well. Now, obviously, if you want to build your own machine and all that stuff, it's going to be totally different. But for a Mac machine, it's going to be hard to find a Mac at this caliber that's this good that is portable as well. So the way I see it, this is the best, most powerful MacBook you can buy. And if this one can't do it, then it's going to be hard to find machines that can do it as well so when it comes down to it performance is amazing on this thing and the battery life of this thing is actually interesting because apple actually mentioned that this thing can get up to 21 hours of apple tv movie playback it's up to 14 hours of wireless web a 100 watt hour lithium battery inside of this thing too which is massive and from i think what they what i've heard this thing has the biggest size battery from any macbook ever made so it should be giving you the best battery life as well and that is another big advantage of owning a macbook like this so in terms of that that kind of covers it up there and to be honest this specific macbook holds up extremely well you know this year it's expected but for the next like five to ten years i don't really think you're going to be thinking that you have a super outdated macbook and to give you some extra you know kind of you know flavor on top of that when you look at the m1 macbook pro that came out at the end of 2020 a lot of people who own that macbook including me i still own mine i could have used that macbook forever i could have used that macbook and even now it still holds up very well the only reason i upgraded was because i wanted that port you have to kind of think to yourself well is there anything that i really want from a macbook that apple could add that i would want to upgrade if they remove that notch would you care if they increased the battery life by way more if they added more ports if they did anything like that you kind of have to think to yourself what is the only reason i would upgrade to another macbook and if they don't if you don't see apple doing that for the next three to four years then i wouldn't really care to be honest like i would get this thing for sure so i think this macbook is amazing i think it's going to be amazing for the next five ten years probably and if you want to buy it i would highly highly recommend buying it so that kind of covers it up if you have any other thoughts or questions please let me know in the comment section below Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.